Welcome to Board Game Binge, the place where we bring you bite-sized, bingeable board game content from across the industry. I'm your host, James Staley, and in this episode, we're chatting with Ross Brugink, creative director, gardener, and award-winning illustrator and designer. His debut game, Vicious Gardens, is crushing it on Kickstarter. Ross, welcome to the binge. How you doing, sir? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Excited oh, to chat. Oh, it is amazing to have you. This is uh, this is exciting. When I saw this game, it's one of those ones where you do kind of like a, a double take just with the whole artwork and the creativity around it. And I know that where that comes from is kind of your starting base of your career and kind of your background and things like that. So we're going to get into this in this episode. Let's just start with kind of the whole like creative design illustrator can you talk to me a little bit about that so what do you what do you do for a living what's your what's your jam yeah so um i'm a creative director at a small agency um that i co-own um and uh it's called buddy buddy and we uh <laughs> specialize in packaging and branding and illustration so we've been open for about five years and before that i you know worked in different design agencies um and so, yeah, design illustration is my background. Um, so it, you know, it's a ancillary kind of addition to game design. For um, sure. Obviously visuals are very important. So is this um, something you took in school? Like, was this like go right back to when you're in school or how'd you get into to design? Yeah. So I went to school at the University of Minnesota. I'm right outside of Minneapolis right now. So oh, nice. um, I've been here for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, I went to school for graphic design and um, just right out, right out of school, um, start, started my career. So um, it's, it's, been, it's been some time. Is this a passion of yours since you were a kid? Like, were you one of those kids that was always kind of doodling and things like that? Or oh, what yeah. got you into it? Yeah, yeah. The whole reason I wanted to <laughs> um, be an artist, but you know, the, the practical side, um, said like, oh, I should get into graphic design so I can make some money. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously that's not a true stigma. You can be successful in so many different ways, but, um, yeah, I went to uh, school to learn about graphic design, just ended up loving it. Just not only like the visual process, but also the, the problem solving aspect of it. Um, and, and combining those, those two things of visuals and, and problem solving too. And what kind of problem solving? Like, what do you mean by problem solving? Well, for instance, if you're making a, a logo for a company, you're, you're not only designing something that hopefully they like, but you also have to think about the audience, the competitive set, um, how it translates into different sizes and scales, how it shows up in social media now, um, so there's more than just creating a beautiful picture. There's more practical application of it. And then also thinking about um, what it communicates to the audience you're trying to reach and how it compares to the competition. Um, so so yeah, just, just that more like strategic base of applying visuals is super intriguing to me. I, I, I got to tell you, I checked out the, uh, the Buddy Buddy website and I mean, the designs you have on there are awesome yeah like they just yeah. just stunning you got that kind of um uh, it's it's tough to describe kind of the vibe but it's definitely got this kind of contemporary kind of funky yet very clean kind of aesthetic that you guys have uh, established now I, I imagine you work with designers and so forth i'm sure you do some of this design yourself um when you, the gaming part how did that kind of kind of pull in like have you been gaming your whole life or when did you get into like board gaming yeah i have since um, I remember like the very first time I played Catan or I, I was just like blown away. Like that was just this experience where I was like every other game that I played has had like very little strategy. This changes every gameplay. Um, and that was like a huge, a huge like moment that actually made me enjoy board games. Yeah. Um, so that happened in, in college and um, I actually worked at summer camp so we didn't have um, TVs and so all of our, our downtime was was playing 
uh, Catan and yeah. it was just like everybody was doing it and um it was it was really fun and and so like that's always stuck with me and um but you know I'm not like a a terribly um avid gamer I I really enjoy it um one of the other one of my other favorite games is Citadels um mm. which has a kind of like similar like take that mechanism to um vicious gardens um but knowing that there's where these games that existed um i just kind of wanted to try my hand at, at designing one as well um for for a couple of reasons one was i wanted an excuse to like use illustrations for a product of my own yeah um, primarily because posters and t-shirts they're awesome but you can only have so many i wanted something with a little bit more utility behind it yep um so so doing that and um also just trying to make a game that like i enjoyed with my friends um mm. which has a lot of you know just kind of playful you know like razzing each other as as we play um you know just shit talking each other like <laughs> much. um and yeah that's the kind of game i enjoy something that's quick and easy to learn um and i have a a young family too so my time is pretty limited so sure. i'm trying to find that balance of something that's enjoyable and quick to play but still has some strategic intrigue behind it was kind of main goal behind the game and was this your first design that you've ever did or did you have other designs that got scrapped and kind of this one is the one that came forward or um so the theme has always been consistent um but the different styles of game it's it's been pretty all over the map so the game that exists today is um thematically the same um there's some elements that are similar but the mechanics have shifted throughout. I mean, there was a time when we were playing with dried beans as game pieces. Oh, wow. Which that was super fun <laughs> and on, on theme, but it was like the most tedious thing in the world. You're like adding beans up. And <laughs> it was just just too much um, for what I wanted. So it's it's gone through many iterations through mechanics, and it's been almost three years now since starting wow. that. And comment. you went through the whole protospiel gambit as well, right? Down in uh, yep. Minneapolis area as well, or? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I went there um, two years ago and this last year, um, and it was awesome. So I, I'm pretty new to the industry and the community, um, and it was great going and and meeting people. I mean, I felt like everybody was so welcome and. Um, really intrigued by the artwork and I got some really, really good feedback on the game itself. And the first day, um, I came back kind of discouraged cause I was like, Oh, this, this game's not working. Um, and then I just like, couldn't fall asleep two 30 in the morning. I made some changes and then the next day it was actually like playable and it was like, okay, like someone's actually in enjoying this. And then, moving on just iterative steps um sharing with people at the at protospiel and getting feedback has has been so helpful um and i met my publishing partner there as well pops and bijou um they're out of fargo and they've just been great great partners to work with um so yeah i mean it was a little um out of my uh realm of comfort going there initially sure. and I, I just felt like people were so welcoming and I learned so much and um, played so many fun ones too. Like just so many different mechanics and different themes and styles of gameplay that I, I didn't know existed. So that's another really great part of that. So is this something you recommend for other people? Like to definitely, if you're looking to come up, you know, go to either like the unpubs or the pro spiels and, and, and get others to, who are game designers to weigh in specifically or? Yeah, yeah, I think, and actually I, th I think there was one in Minneapolis this last weekend that I, I couldn't go to and I was really disappointed about that <laughs> because um, even going there with just to play test is so fun because 
these games are good and they're not all like two hour campaigns. Like there's lots of people just doing like party games or like yeah. really, really quick play ones or really light, um, just fun and feel good games. Um, I brought my daughter there on the last day on the last one and she's, she's seven and she just had a blast. Like we just played different games and it was amazing to see like what, she was able to uh, retain and take in and play and she just loved it there. Um, so I, I think it's it's so much fun, even more fun just going as a casual gamer and giving your input yeah. because you don't have as much of kind of a agenda or checklist to get through as far as like play testing. You can just experience games and, and help creators um, and all of it's very, very welcoming. I, there was never a point I don't think that anybody went there and, and felt kind of um, out of their league or anything. I love having like a balance of uh, people who are obviously into game design and have games of their own, but even people that are going in those casual gamers. Those are the hidden gems in those events because really they're coming at it with very kind of fresh eyes. Right. And they're not looking, right. they're not trying to see under the hood and how the engine yeah. works while they're, while they're driving the car, so to speak, they're just kind of playing it and, either they're having fun or they're not right. They're either enjoying yeah. it or they're not, or they're feeling like there's dead hands or they or they don't. And you know, that feedback I find balance helps balance off some of that deeper kind of feedback you get sometimes where that's important as well. We have people who do game design for a living. They can go super deep, super quick and say, well, you might want to check these little things here that aren't quite working. And that might then bubble up to the surface to fix that thing you're trying to fix up here. But um, for me, I, I, I love to kind of have as wide a swath of experience levels as possible, uh, playing the game. So you do get that balance. Um, they're also less likely to kind of try to turn the game into something that they would want to play <laughs> and just give you yeah. feedback on your game, which is sometimes a trap. I'll say it yeah. when you're playing with game designers is they automatically go into the design mode. Okay, how can we how can we fix this? How can we change this into something yeah. that's going to work in this other avenue? And it might not be the direction you're trying to go. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. really, it's just like, are you having fun? Like, yeah. what's that's and like you're saying, like you you get that more with people who are just there for like to to play a game. I mean, that's what we're all about in the end. And yeah, yeah the the more um, detailed feedback is helpful, but it's good to know that like, Oh, you're just having a good time playing this. Like that's really what this is all about. Yeah, so. exactly. Now you had a launch boom accelerator program on the bottom of your page as well. I want to jump into that really quick. We had Mark on the, uh, the CEO uh, a few weeks back and, uh, uh, free plug for him. I actually read his book afterwards and my gosh, is it a paint by numbers on how to go through and launch a, uh, launch a a, a a game on on kickstarter or indiegogo but for the gaming industry it's going to be predominantly kickstarter um what what connected you to launch room how did you get connected to these guys um i had a email reach out to me um i forget the the contact there but i someone reached out to me and then um you know i was just promoting on instagram at that point um but I was trying very hard to have like a very like distinct visual presence from yeah. the beginning. Um, so someone reached out, I'm assuming just cause they saw, saw mm. the, the content. And then, um, I talked to Maria there. Um, and yeah, and then signed up and <laughs> I mean, there was so much I did not know. Going into <laughs> this. Um, I, I delayed my launch by like, four months or so just because yeah i was i was aiming to launch just with my existing network um i didn't i didn't know about like the the funnel or like facebook ads i yeah i i was pretty pretty new to it all and that's not saying you can't launch a kickstarter um that way but i there's so much that i i learned through that program um well i think to be so clear you i mean first game right yeah new to the industry um you know it, the odds are stacked against you uh entering like i i, I mean for those and i'm gonna put this in canadian dollars uh just, it's the only way i can see it but you're at four hundred eighty-four thousand dollars. uh still eight to get days to go you're gonna have the back end hockey stick so in canadian dollars this is easily going to be six hundred thousand dollar campaign probably even higher right that's a huge huge number for 
your first your first campaign and being new to the industry. I would I would be interested, you know, if you could use a time machine or have a parallel universe of you know what would that have looked like had you not gone through that program and just tried to kind of like you know figure out building that like no audience either right if you're new to the game industry you have zero as your audience right and you got to build that from scratch and as we all know it all comes down to your audience that you've built for your for your campaign so um so kudos to you for recognizing that hey there's a lot i don't know here that i got to try to figure out and figure out quickly and then i think the other thing you mentioned which i really like to hear is when people say you know what i pushed my campaign back because i wasn't quite ready or there's some things i still need to figure out before i launched there's an equal number of people I've run into, uh, unfortunately, in the industry where they have a date stuck in their head. And if anybody's read Jamie Stegmeyer's book, this is one of the things that he really harps on in his book was, you know, you know, no one's going to remember a, a campaign being delayed, but they are going to remember a campaign that, you know, fails spectacularly, right? There's no cost to, to pushing your campaign back. This is all things that you're creating in your own head, these, these, these little goalposts. And you can move those goalposts if you want, if it's going to set you up for better success. So kudos to you for even having the, you know, the the, the yeah. emotional intelligence to be able to do that as well, because it's not an easy thing to do, especially when people get fixated on, oh, I got launched by X, Y, Z date. And, you know, and then they just go and they're not ready. So so kudos to you yeah. for that. Um, oh, thanks. Your, the other thing I want to jump in on is the video. My God, this video on your campaign. Did you make this video yourself? Who made this? This is stop yeah. motion. This is... Yeah, it was... Um... It was a winter in a, a garage that was just a complete mess. Um, so, so I did have help from a fantastic video editor to put to compile all the clips. And sure. My friend is a musician, so he did a a take on um, Morning Mood, a kind of like classic pastoral, you know, agricultural esque um, piece of music, but. Yeah, it took ages. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd do it again. Um, I had, uh, my daughters have a lot of um, like dollhouse pieces and such. Yeah. So I had the the little um, people. Um, we have a fairy garden in our in our garden. Um, so I had I had some supplies from that. And then I was able to, to gather the rest of the set just going to thrift stores and, and buying silk flowers and <laughs> another like various it maybe it's just my sense of humor because i have a bit of a darker sense of humor but yeah. <laughs> the opening scene and I, <laughs> I encourage anybody please if you do anything even if you don't back this campaign go check out the video like it starts off with one gardener throwing a pair of gardening shears into the chest of another gardener it's yeah. like okay that's this is obviously a take that game right like this is going to be this is a vicious <laughs> garden so I, number one i was laughing yes. Uh, but yeah. God, well done. I, I, yeah. they need to have an award category. Maybe they already do. I don't know with like dice tower on these guys for, uh, Kickstarter videos, <laughs> right? Cause there, yeah. there, there's uh, Ori Kagan who came productions. There's David Diaz from Mesa game labs. And then anybody that creates their own, but like these, there should be a category where there's an award for best, like this for sure would take the cake. It yeah. is so well done. Uh, awesome. so I want to give yeah. you guys kudos to that cause it is, yeah. it, it hooks you and, and my God, uh, bravo, man. That was just, just awesome. <laughs> yeah, so let's thanks. talk about the game. So explain to people, so vicious gardens, what's it about? And then how do people play? Uh, if you're going to kind of use descriptive words to, to explain it. Yeah. So I would say it's, um, I use this line a lot, but it takes the thrill of gardening and combines it with being a jerk. So <laughs> right away, you know, your, your path to victory is going to have to come through screwing uh, another opponent over. Um, so it's a uh, card based um, and it's set collecting. And then there's decisions as to how you stack your hand. Do you want to add more plants, which allow you to purchase victory cards and get you points? Or do you want to invest in specialists, which then allow you to kind of manipulate different gardens, um, steal plants from other players, um, and protect or inhibit um, other your garden or other gardens. So um, it's pretty, pretty light. I say it's, it's a 30 minute playthrough. Mm. Um, there's what I really love about it is toward the end of the game, the, the beginning of the game is pretty slow as you're getting your feet wet, kind of understanding how the game works. But as your gardens build up and your opponent's gardens build up, 
um, toward the end of the game, there's bigger point swings, which I've always had like such a blast seeing how the lead sometimes can change on that last turn. Um, so there's always this sense of investment there um, for all, all the players playing where you always have a sense that you could come back. And lots of times you do, if you're the furthest behind in the beginning, you, you find your way back. So um, it has, you know, it's a, I would say it's a take that game, um, but it's also a, a very balanced take that game, which um, I think is very appropriate. Um, starting to rain here too so <laughs> let me know edit my mic or anything oh it's all good that's amazing yeah. so then with the uh, and, and there's two things i noticed kind of uh, as i kind of scrolled on your your page there while you're chatting one is you've got this uh kickstarter exclusive sleeve that goes over the box which yep. gives us a very elegant kind of shelf presence what was the thought process behind adding that in yeah so packaging design being the that's like a huge part of my day-to-day -day, um job i just am all about presentation and and how things appear on a shelf um and so just the idea of having that intrigue that kind of that sense of sophistication um in the cover where you're not trying to communicate your whole game mm. through a cover and you're trying to have this premium quality that also has a bit of mystery and intrigue to it where someone might see it on shelf and want to ask you to what that's about um so so that was the whole idea behind it um i'm a sucker for foil printing on anything um so i want to incorporate that and then it it also is double-sided depending on which cover you like best essentially um so so yeah the, the nice thing about the it being a kickstarter exclusive is it's not retail it's not on a retail shelf so we're, you don't have to have the whole player account you don't have to have the description of the game you can just have something that that looks nice and and something that will work well in your home yeah um, so that was the, the thinking behind that oh that's cool and then you have expansions so i know there's like four different expansions you have as add-ons in the campaign yeah. So are these things that were kind of like that you had kind of designed along the way or did you kind of get the base game and then you went and created expansions or how did they kind of play into the game itself? Yeah, there were elements that I always wanted to include in the base game, but I was really, really trying to be cognizant of who I, who was like the, the target market player and, and thinking of, and my friends who I didn't want to overly complicate the base game. Um, and so the expansions were different ideas that I thought would be cool to incorporate into the base game, but um, I merited their own kind of separate course of action, I guess, for people to decide to take. Um, so, you know, some are pretty classic, like secret goal cards. Um, the idea of adding weeds to a garden is a more uh, thematic choice for noxious weeds, which is another um, expansion. Um, and each one kind of offers like a little twist on how you would approach the game and how you would manage your hand and, and your garden. Um, but a big part of it is I wanted to design four because I really wanted to do this double-sided box. Um, that was also the same when you when you flip it upside down. Yeah. Uh, so it was partly indulgent on uh, me having my my fun with the the box packaging. Oh, that's amazing. And then with um, your your publisher, uh, as you're showing on the screen here. So how did you how did you connect with them? So pops yeah, and uh, Beijing them, games. Yeah, I met them at at Protospiel, and they took an interest in the game, and we. We talked and we we figured out what would be the best um, relationship and, and me being a first time designer and um, not really wanting to continue to manage this after launch. Mm -hmm. um, they've been great partners and kind of letting me do the, the game design, the campaign design, um, really helping advise along the way. Yeah. Um, their experience of doing Kickstarters. Um, and then they're going to then uh, take it to retail and distribute it. Um, 
after the campaign and um we'll we'll just be partners moving forward in, in that realm so um they they've been great and flexible which i think is super helpful in this kind of modern entrepreneurial um design environment where we're at with kickstarter and and people starting their own own projects so um yeah so i i'm excited and and yeah they've been fantastic partners and have had great insight throughout was there any push for them to from them to like change any elements of the game or is there anything where they requested say hey like can you change this this one thing here it's just it's going to help us from a like a manufacturer standpoint or retail perspective like was there any changes along the way at all or um yeah but uh, it was very collaborative um mm. the name changed we started out as savage gardens which okay. i thought was awesome is that a band yeah yeah oh yeah definitely <laughs> which is why i thought it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> savage gardens that's amazing but uh but yeah for obvious reasons that was in retrospect not the the best yeah <laughs> and and so they were fully fully supportive of, of changing that um they've never been like pushy but also have been like very straightforward with their their thoughts and feedback which has been awesome um especially with manufacturing and me kind of getting in my own way sometimes with wanting to add too many kind of visual assets um to the game yeah. able to have that um experience and and set of advice on on what gamers may be looking for more than um more than just like fancy packaging like what's the practicality of it so um for, I... for instance, we incorporated um all the expansions into the box which i didn't really th- think of they'll they'll all fit in the box now oh perfect um, i was gonna ask you that as well yeah yeah i was i was approaching it thinking like oh people will want these boxes to be displayed because they're cool but there's not practicality behind that like you yeah. want it all in one place so um yeah so they've just been fantastic to to bounce those ideas off of and and kind of um pr- provide a counterbalance and, and check when when i might be missing something yeah the um it's amazing to me that you know there, there's so much learning and you know even i'll talk to some people that have been in the industry like from content creator standpoint and kind of behind the scenes will be talking about and they'll, they'll start asking me about production right and there's things that i i assume are general knowledge that i realize are not general at all and um you know that's when working with designers is sometimes you got to pull back the reins right and say okay i understand what you're trying to do there but here's the the impact on cost if we do that and one i came across the other day is someone was talking about a rule book and they're like well they should add one more page just one more page yeah. would make this so much clearer it's like well no you have to add four pages you, you can't add have one pages, right, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. because <laughs> you're printing in in fours right like the, the yep. way the books fold together so um but the average person wouldn't know that right or hey right. why don't you do yeah. just do xyz it's like okay i can but that's going to increase the weight of the game which is going to impact the shipping or Yep. We're going to have to change this, which is going to, to is going to increase the cost. It might seem small, but by the time that flows through to retail, that works out to be another four dollars per you know per game MSRP on on, on you know on that copy. So it's right. kind of trying to work your way through those uh, those nuances yet on balance, not not lose kind of what the designers have put together. I think in this case, you're probably the the dream designer to work with because you come with the art as well. Right, and a lot of times, uh, as a main, as a publisher, you have to go and uh, you'll take a game, and then you have to go develop it, and you have to get artists and all these things to you know kind of you know build out that um, you know that that visual look of the game. Yeah. Where in this case they don't. You come with that, yeah. which is which is amazing. <laughs> right. So uh, kudos yeah. to you on that. I think that's I think that's awesome. Um, so kind of where do you go from here? Like, is are you going to keep doing game design or are you kind of out of the gig now or what's what like what's next? Yeah. Um, well, next is getting through this final week. God, it's like so much. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited to 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 see what where this week brings us. And and I'm so excited to like finish the uh, the illustrations, you know, I, I have maybe eight more plants to illustrate. So I've been doing that throughout the campaign. I'm, yeah. I'm so excited for people to actually like experience all these like really quirky and kind of dumb 
some punny names that we've been giving the plants. Um, but after after um, this gets produced and and it's out in the world, you know, there's four more games that I I need to start play testing and prototyping. Um, one I've I've actually had for a while. That's a completely different take, more of a classic board game, not even board game, classic tile laying game. Um, that's much more about the kind of like the simplicity and the beauty of of a classic game so mm -hmm. really aiming for that instead of quirkiness and humor with that um and then some other fun ideas so sorry that's a, a long-winded answer to say that I'm, I'm not done and i'm i'm so excited to design more and learn from from this first experience i think upcoming products will just be all that more exciting to work on and having done this process already I, I think there's so many learnings to take from it and um yeah so so i'm terribly excited to to make the next ones as you should be well i want to congratulate you on what you've achieved so far i mean this is this is Thank very you. impressive and uh still eight days to go so this is going to have a very strong finish for you that I'm sure you guys are going to be happy with. For those who want to check out this campaign, I encourage them to uh, go on to Kickstarter, Vicious Gardens. I'll also put a link in, in the show notes. Uh, you can quickly take you there. At the very least, check out the video on his page. Like, oh, It is so good. Uh, Ross, I want to wish you all the best in this coming year. I can't wait to see where this ends. And uh, I'll be watching and rooting for you, my friend. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, buddy. You take care. Cheers. Great. You too. This has been an episode of the Board Game Binge Podcast, hosted by James Staley, produced by James Staley and Mike Bruner, with original music by Nick Smith. If you would like to watch these interviews live, simply subscribe to our YouTube channel, Board Game Binge, and you'll get access to live interviews, giveaways, and interesting board game content from across the industry. I can't wait for you to join us. See you next time.